law enforcement generally believes that Carl went missing between 5050 and Lake Helen, but the the question that keeps coming up when you talk to people involved in the search is where? I mean, there's nowhere for him to hide. It was less than a thousand feet to the lake. Like, where did you go? <laughs> yeah. And he, it, he was only out of sight from his friends for 30 minutes. Well, and that's where you have the guys there too that know the mountain like the back of their hand. And yeah. you don't have any statement saying, well, I guess he could have went off this side here and went down the mountain this way. Because a lot of times yeah. you'll have people saying, well, here's the possibilities because there's a little stream that goes down here and then ends up in deep brush. And yep. he could have fallen in there. The resounding overall comments is there's only one way to go. Otherwise, it's yeah. just like this flat, deserty part of the mountain. It's like a crater part that's just flat, easy to traverse, and such a small window that it just it's baffling literally everybody that touches it that knows the mountain. Yeah, and you know, Grizz even stated that he was bothered by the fact that his searchers weren't finding any of Carl's equipment. So the logical thing that you could say happened to Carl is, you know, he succumbed to exposure, he got hypothermia. But if that was the case, you'd expect him to start ripping off layers of clothing, ditching his boots, his gloves. Yeah. You know, the, the the standard thing that people do when they get hypothermia. They didn't find a single piece of clothing from Carl. And you have Nothing. so many witnesses. Yeah. That, so That's insane. Uh, yeah. It, you know, um, it was mentioned that during, you know, in the community of uh, Shasta, Mount Shasta City, that during this search, the, the same phrase kept coming up that they they said it's like the mountain just opened up and swallowed him yeah and that like falls you know, in line with the local legends yeah it falls in line with the local legends of those weird beings that live under the mountain the lemurians uh, the, yeah so you know that's the case of carl herbert landers it's i out of all the cases we've done this is by far the one i'm I'm struggling with trying to think of a theory that makes sense. Yeah, because we've had the disappearances that don't make sense, but this is such a small window, such a heavily yeah. populated area with the experience and everything all combined. And then the search area not being riddled with either crevasses or super... Because a lot of the places that we have people go missing, there's a lot of dense brush. Yep. And that's legitimately where someone could get lost and maybe not found for many years because it's when you're bushwhacking in a mountain, you can't see four feet to the sides of you. So there could be a body and you don't even know you walk by it. Yeah. But this is wide open. This is just wide open space for way farther than he would have been able to walk within the amount of time that they started searching, especially surviving through the night without gear. Yeah, and you, you got to think that it, it, it was getting cold at night. It was probably oh, absolutely. in the low 20s during the day. Um, so he had, he had no shelter. You know, assuming maybe he, you know, was dehydrated from taking that altitude sickness medicine and he was kind of getting delirious and he wandered off, you're not going to survive very long in those conditions. Well, and that's where I'd say all all those red flags and all those things you just mentioned to me limits the distance he can even go. Even if he, you know, beeline straight line because he's delirious, he's not going very far in that under those circumstances. No. And living. So, I mean, collapsing and, and what have you. And with such a short search window beginning right there too, yeah, you yeah, found him right away. It's puzzling, and, and you can't really say that he went down the mountain because his friends saw him go, you know, up towards Lake Helen. So, um, yeah, I just I think you can rule out animal attack. Um, there's you know black bears and coyotes but those are at lower elevations yeah the elevations are at made sound like that that's not a huge issue i mean maybe with that many people and food yeah uh it's possible possible but but still i i say highly unlikely yeah i think um i think the fact you know i would i i think um hypothermia would have been high on my list but the fact that he you know they didn't find a single piece of clothing yeah yeah, that normally I would me. say that... uh, frozen or yo know, yeah. altitude sickness, wander off course, froze and and died somewhere off trail. But then again, it's that sh- the openness and the shortness of the distance is what's really baffling. Yeah. Now, have we gone through? And I don't want to go down a road of uh, accusations or anything, but to me, I think it has to be vetted out. Are we guaranteed that all three of them were together when they got to the mountain? Um, so is there reports of people at 5050 that have seen all three of them together? So I'm almost wondering, 
you know, not even saying foul oh. play of the friends, but did he never go? And there's a cover up. It, did they bring bags and strategically leave his backpack there and then go report he's missing? I would assume. Um, <clears throat> I know I'm, I'm getting in crazy Hollywood theories because I don't know. So it's like, does he owe a gambling debt to the mob and they have to make him dis- <laughs> His friends are like helping him disappear or something. Yeah. No, I mean, you do need a permit to summit. Mount Shasta, and you can only get that by going to the ranger station. So I'm assuming yeah, because they don't record names initially, but you do sign in. Yeah, I'm assuming that they he at the at a minimum checked in. Okay, because otherwise they wouldn't even search and say you don't even have that guy here. Yeah, he wasn't in your. So at a minimum, he checked in. Now, you know that. I mean, what's crazier, the theory you just mentioned, or that beings living in the mountains swallowed him up, well, I mean. or that he <laughs> vanished? I mean, it's 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 all possible. It's or they checked in and it was all part of some plan to get him gone for whatever reason. Yeah, honestly, that while as far out there as you can be, besides you know, I think alien it is. beings eating him. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think that might be a you know one of the more logical explanations for what happened to him. Yeah. Um maybe he lived a double life and he uh you know had some debts or you know something was going wrong and he had to kind of like that Arvin Nels- Nelson guy. Yes. We yeah, like we think it ends up being maybe like a wit sec thing. Wit sec thing. I mean, what else could it possibly be? I, yeah, I mean it's <laughs> it's quite literally all things lined up perfectly and there's like a tiny little snowdrift that covered him up and no searcher or the hundreds of people found him. And, and no one like, in the last 20 years has found ex- him. Yeah, or that, or... I mean, you think about... Supernatural you, I mean, beings took him off the mountain into the mountain itself. Or, right. yeah, or yeah, he's in hiding. And his buddies, you know, lifelong friends helped him do it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's it's... I think those are all crazy and all on the table. <laughs> yeah, I, I really you know. Do. I didn't even, I didn't even think of that theory. So that uh... it kind of hit me coming up because as <laughs> it, it hit me because I didn't read as in depth. And after yeah. you're going over the statements from Grizz and other authorities and other people hiking the mountain, yep. And yeah, I even saw in your notes they had could ever sniffing dogs. And oh dogs yeah, I forgot to in. mention that. So like that that too, like they didn't have significant weather changes from when they brought out the dogs yeah, to no smell the stuff and they had no picked up scent at all. Yeah. Which, you know, we when we talked to um And that's uh, the, honestly that's when I thought too like, okay, did he check in and did he ever actually go up the mountain at all? Yeah. I mean and we did when we talked to the search and rescue director from Colorado, he did mention that, you know, the cadaver sniffing dogs, yeah, they have a really powerful scent, but if the area gets contaminated with other hikers and people, it can get really hard for them to pick up a scent. Yeah. So gotta we gotta you know, mention that Take it with a grain of salt. Take it with a grain of salt. Those dogs are amazing in what they can smell, but it the it can the area can get contaminated to the point where they, they can't pick up a scent. Sure. So but you know, adding that into everything else, I mean you had client, you had professional climbers coming down the mountain. Yeah, I wonder how the cold and altitude play in that because of also you hear the other side where these dogs will follow a scent for seven miles of someone who was in a car. Yeah. To like a specific building, and then they find a body there. Yeah. So, like, but but it's also not in at altitude on a mountain in snow either. Like yeah. I'm sure that affects it greatly as well. Oh, probably. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, so you, like I said, you've got professional climbers that came down from the summit. You have a you had an Army National Guard helicopter pilot that I'm sure was doing, uh, you know, searching from the air. You had search and rescue people down in the forest below the mountain, um, working in a grid pattern, you know, all the way around the mountain, and no one found anything. And now nothing. twenty years of high activity on a mountain. Twenty years, probably every year, being coming more and more active. Oh sure. Yeah, I mean, the, the, you don't want to think about this, but on Everest, they've been finding more and more bodies as, you know, climate change makes the planet warmer, things are melting, and, you know, things are appearing. So you've got to assume it's warmer on Mount Shasta now than it was 20 years ago. If yeah. something happened where he got well, and more snowed and more in. People are getting out in national parks and yep. doing things maybe they shouldn't. So I'm, I'm guessing there's a bunch of people that maybe don't even summit the mountain, but hike out to the lake to camp. 
Yeah. That's See, something I would definitely do if I lived in that area. I am fully on board the Joe train with this theory now. <laughs> I think uh, I think he never was even on the mountain. So you think like he checked in at the office or yeah. got the permit checked in and maybe, I think I think like he's hanging buddy, out with Arvin. Yeah, him and Arvin are in Witsack <laughs> together. I but, mean, uh, what else like, could it do you, be? Do you think maybe? Do you think so? Let's let's look at it this way because I don't want to. I don't always want to paint somebody's bad. Like maybe it's a safety thing. Like for some reason he had to, and his buddies are helping him out for his own good, and yeah. he didn't do anything wrong. But maybe I don't know. He witnessed something he shouldn't have. Yeah. Or I don't know. And now they're helping him quietly because they think the authority. Like let's go full Hollywood. They can't yeah. talk to the cops because what he saw was like something the cops were doing so his buddies are now in this heroic mission to we're going to check in we're going to climb this mountain where we have this great backstory yeah i'm going to bring your bag up to camp and by the next day we're going to report you missing yeah and that's that's like that seems that super seems, insane it seems super insane but it would like, be insane that made, in any other that, circumstance it, yeah but it, it kind of answers the question of what happened very well that's I mean, the why search and rescue we only people, have his bag there. That's why there's no yeah. trace I mean, of this, him anywhere else. The search and rescue uh, people mention that it, it's like he never was even on the mountain. Yeah, and that's so, that's kind of what struck out to me is, is yeah. odd. And then when the dogs couldn't pick up anything, again, like you said, grain of salt, they might have not just did it. But yeah. his bag's there, but he's not. And he yeah. never was, potentially. Yeah, so I, I don't know, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, I think I'm on board with your theory. All right. Just because none of the other theories make sense. Yeah, I think uh, I, I'm going to try and reach out to Grizz. <laughs> we'll do another. We'll do one of our, our shortened episodes if you get a hold of him. I would yeah, love absolutely. To that talk that, to that him. would be great. Just because I'd I'd love to get his. Maybe he's off now and can be a little bit more open about opinions. Because a yeah. lot of times, you know, they'll be more PC about what they think. Yep. Um, but if he's not working for Sar anymore or, or anything like that, maybe. After 20 years of dwelling on it, like you said, he's only had two ever yeah. at that point, at least in his 400 career. I'm sure this is one that sticks with a guy like that. Like, oh yeah. What did what did we miss? What did we not do that we couldn't find this guy? These guys take pride in, you know, finding, yeah, you know, every single person that goes missing. I mean, that's you know, they don't they're not going to sleep until they find you. Well, so to I, have I a mean, case I was, where they, I was a medic and a firefighter, and it was yeah. it's more than a job. It's it's. It's literally a mission, and in, in each case, each call, each medical emergency you go to, it's it's personal to a certain degree of, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to work hard to do right by this. So if there was somebody, if my job was search and rescue, and on arguably one of the easier mountains to search, not yeah. saying you can always rescue, but at least re recovery, and not find a single trace of that person, that's got to be in, like may almost make you go insane about what yeah. did I do wrong? What did we miss? What, what could have happened? Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. This is a, a very bizarre case and I don't think we'll ever truly know what happened to Carl. Yeah. Um, All but, right. In closing. Yeah. I think the Hollywood, the p positive Hollywood, he saw <laughs> something he shouldn't have. His buddies are heroically helping him go into hiding yeah. as, a, as an unsolved missing person's case. Honestly, that's that's where I'm at. That's that's it. That's my theory. Yeah, and I think the second theory is he was swallowed up by the mountain. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's it. 